My sister told me that when our grandfather died, no one was there to cry at his funeral. My mother was boiling cabbage soup, my grandmother was pickling white radish and cucumbers, and my aunt was baking red bean pastries in her kitchen. Because hearts do not speak in this home, because our families are trapped in a Pavlovian design of affection, because what poison memories left untreated renders us mute and desperately silent, we try to remedy the cycle of this condition with the same medicine. Your mother threatened suicide when you wanted to quit the violin, so she made you your favorite teriyaki chicken. Your father threw a book at your nose, so he treats the wound with ice cubes from the freezer. His father beat him with a soup spoon, so his mother bought him dumplings from the vendor across the street. My mother doesn't speak to me for a week, so she leaves a plate of apples by the door of my bedroom. My sister kicks my legs underneath the dining table, hard enough to bruise, and five years later, she takes me to her favorite dim sum restaurant. This house is frozen in a sheet of ice, and it is also on fire. And I know you're afraid that you'll never love someone, and you'll never be able to love yourself, but love, this I know, we are the best combination of our parents. And when you're tying your shoelaces, about to fly to your 9 to 5, I'll kiss you on the forehead and tell you that I love you. And your eyes will widen and jaw will slacken because it will be the first time anyone has said that to you. And I'll cut you fruit the way our mothers did. And in the morning at 7.30 a.m., when you've just woken up from our bedroom, I'll bring your plate of hash browns and sunny side eggs to the duvet. And child living on loving, now living knowing that we are the loveliest things.